crime and punishment tonight, a New York grand jury is investigating a fatal shooting that some are comparing to the Trayvon Martin shooting. Now, in this case, an unarmed elderly veteran was killed, shot to death in his own home by police officers who broke down his door. Five months later, no one's been charged. The, family's, the man's family is demanding what they say would be justice. You're sold at O'Brien. The alarm rang in at 5 a.m. on a cold winter morning. A 68-year-old Vietnam vet with a severe heart condition had set off his medical alert device. But instead of an ambulance, police arrived at Kenneth Chamberlain's apartment. Neighbors saw guns drawn, a riot shield. They stated that if he didn't come open the door, they was going to knock it down. Right across from the elevator to the His niece, who lives upstairs, told police at the scene he'd set off the alarm accidentally to please let his family talk to him. I just kept hearing my uncle, you know, respond, please leave me alone, go away. I didn't call you. I don't need your help. Chamberlain and the police were being recorded by the alert device. You hear one of the officers then use an expletive, and that's when he said he didn't give a F, used the N word. The N word? Yes. Law enforcement sources confirm that's on the tape. But there's more. Later, the district attorney showed the family two videos in their custody one from a hallway security camera, another recorded by a camera on a taser gun. Kenneth Jr. demonstrated what he saw. What is your dad saying? What's he doing? He's standing there, he's looking at them, and you hear the officers saying, hit it again, hit it again, hit it again. And then at one point you hear the officers say, shut it off. So the last part that I saw on the video with my father was him just like this. Police say Chamberlain threatened them with knives. The officers first used an electronic taser, uh, which was discharged hit the victim and had no effect. While the officers were retreating, the officers then used a shotgun, a beanbag shotgun. So then they fired two real bullets. An autopsy report obtained by CNN shows them entering the side of his arm, indicating that Chamberlain was not facing the officers or had turned away. So the story that the police put out, that he was an axe-wielding black man designed trying to hurt a police officer is what it is, a flat-out lie. Chamberlain's lawyers acknowledge he did throw out a silver object. At that moment, a bolt cutter comes from the police officers and removes the object. So from that point forward, there's absolutely no evidence that at any time Mr. Chamberlain had a weapon in his hands. There is no way to know. The taser video suddenly cuts off before the shots are fired. So you must have thought it is ironic in sort of the terrible way that someone summoned to your father's door to help save his life if he had been having some kind of heart emergency. Yes. Ended up shooting him. Yes. And, and they took his life. Unnecessarily. They didn't have to. The shooter, police officer Anthony Corelli, is a decorated officer. His lawyer said, we trust that the grand jury will rightfully determine that Officer Corelli's actions, while perhaps not understandable or acceptable to family members, attorneys, and other emissaries of the Chamberlain family, were justified under our laws. Chamberlain's niece will soon testify before that grand jury. She wants to know why police couldn't defuse the confrontation and wouldn't ask the family to help. And just to hear him constantly say over and over again, please leave me alone, I'm okay. And the way they mocked him and picked at him is very hurtful. Anderson, I'm going to have more on the story tomorrow morning when I talk to Kenneth Chamberlain's son on my show Starting Point tomorrow at 7 a.m. So there was a 911 call. Why were police there? Well, the 911 call basically says a person has triggered their alarm, and that will trigger an ambulance, but often the police will get there ahead of time, so the police just happen to get there first. The and what kind of condition was he in? Was he capable of being uh, aggressive? We had a, a chance to look at his medical reports. What you see in the medical reports is a, a person who has um, 
uh, you know, serious heart and, and uh, sort of breathing problems. So he's described as someone who couldn't really walk up a flight of stairs, could get halfway before he'd have to, to stop. At the same time, law enforcement has said that they've been called to his address before. He's never been arrested. They won't elaborate on what called to the address before really means. And this was all being recorded, unbeknownst well, to police? Well, that's the or... thing, and we're going to obviously hope to get uh, access to those recordings, but recorded three ways. There was a camera in the hallway of the apartment, uh, outside of the apartment. There was the life alert also records. It's Once it's triggered, it starts a recording device. So that entire hour or so was recorded of conversations. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the taser, the minute you take the safety off, you unhook the safety, starts recording video. Wow. Uh, sold out. Appreciate it. Thanks. You we'll bet. continue Thanks. to follow it. Uh, coming up, The Ridiculous. We'll be right back.